I've lived here in Dallas all my life. My parents, they're from Mexico, and they came here as soon as they got married. My aunts and my grandparents, they all lived in the same neighborhood. My aunt, she's the one that introduced my mom to the salesmanship program. And then from there, you know, she enlisted us in school there. My grandpa, my grandma, they came to earn more money to provide for my mom's family in New Mexico. He wanted to have a better future. And then my dad and my mom decided that they followed my grandpa and they stayed. Él era muy callado, os no hablaba mucho. Uh, cuando llegó a esta escuela. I had so many problems when I was a little kid. I wouldn't talk. And that's why when we came here for, for therapy, I would just distance myself from everybody. I would like to be like sit in the back, just not talk to anybody. Uh, there was a point where I wouldn't even talk to the teacher. And if I did, I would uh, have to walk to them and then whisper them in the ear because I was just so afraid. I don't know why. For me, life was like getting into trouble a lot. I didn't really feel much with friends and family, so I was disappointing them. I felt pretty lonely, and I saw other people who really interacted with their parents. And I was like, huh, why can't I be that kid? I was mucho al ver la situación. No sabía cómo manejarla. Si era algo difícil, algo que pensábamos que estaba fuera de nuestras manos. The community is facing such a significant problem with education. Families are coming into our schools with really complex situations. Poverty is actually the single biggest risk factor. Many kids in the Dallas ISD schools match demographically the kids that we serve. So 87% of our kids are growing up in poverty at the school, and that's close to our neighborhood schools and higher than the district. Mariana, mi niña, le pido a Dios con todo mi corazón por tu felicidad y tu plenitud en todas las etapas de tu vida. Que cada obstáculo y cada sufrimiento a lo largo de tu viaje por este mundo te ayuden a crecer. Eh, mis sueños para él y mis metas son este, que sea un buen padre. Mm profesional, que es, sea un buen hombre. I think that education is the most important issue facing our society, particularly urban public education. If we get that right, it's good for the economy, uh, it's good for the community. Uh, Better educated people tend to be healthier. Uh, better educated people, not universally, but tend to have more stable families. We improve education, we can attract business to Dallas. All that's right. But if none of that was true, we ought to do it because it's just the right thing to do. Served nine years on the Dallas School Board. I was president for three years. Part of my interest in public education, probably uh, related to my dad, he was very active in the civil rights movement in the 60s and 70s. The federal judge, Mac Taylor, who was hearing the Dallas School of Segregation case, asked my dad to put together a tri-racial committee to write the segregation plan. 
uh, which they did. Uh, he signed it, and that's how we desegregated schools in Dallas without any violence. Massive exodus of whites from the school district. A lot of consequences of it. He had some serious health problems during that, and I'm convinced that it shortened his life. It was so, you can imagine, stressful. I was not in the middle of it, but the more I thought about it, the more it seemed to me obvious that the highest leverage thing we could do for our country, or less our city, is to improve public education. When we look at Dallas's big markers, uh, college-ready graduation, home ownership, those big markers have not moved nearly as much as all of us want them to move. When you look at a community that has 53% of the population has actually graduated from high school, you have to understand that graduating from high school has not been a really highly valued thing. Not because people don't understand there is a value, but because it hasn't been valuable. The kind of education we've been delivering to kids has not been an education that's worth staying in school for. So what we're saying is let's all get together and figure out how to change some of these systems in order to impact generations and not just families. If trauma, abuse, mental illness, poverty, and the toxic stress that comes with it, if those things are getting in the way, the brain literally can't absorb even the best instruction. I would have trouble trying out new things. And that's when my dad had always told me, kept telling me, you know, don't be, don't be nervous, don't be uh, embarrassed, because that's, that's something that's gonna hold you back. And I wouldn't listen to him, obviously, you know, I was just a little kid. As we work with children, our responsibility has been to equip them with the things that they need in order to succeed. And up to now, we've been very clear that those things were academic. We know that good teaching works in classrooms. We know that good leadership is what schools need. And yet we keep coming up against this issue of why is this not working? What are we missing? What piece are we not addressing that we should be? We realized, oh my gosh, there's this thing that we should be addressing that we haven't even thought about, which is the social and emotional needs of children. Things that hamper a child's mental development is stress. We know that our moms, they don't have enough money. They, in most cases, don't have enough education. They may not have enough partner. There's so many things in their lives that are not enough, and that's a stressful situation. We know their babies are stressed. All of us can understand the impact, frankly, of stress, because we all have stressful lives. We know how scattered our brains are. The impact that stress has on a child's ability to exercise discernment and to have short-term memory, both of which are really critical in a classroom every day. My mom would get so stressed, she would work, she would, uh, she would help out my dad. But my mom and my dad just, just, they wanted me to have a better future, so, and I noticed that. Our therapeutic after school program really got its origin from our wilderness program we had in East Texas for decades. It's a place where you learn by doing. My dad was also a member of the Salem Ship Club, a past president. I was chairman of the camp board one year. And our mission was helping, you know, 40, 50 young boys sort of get over the hump on some problems they were having. When I first got in the club, which was 1969, we were purely a residential treatment center for the boys. For many of those decades, we were focused on very troubled teens, and we served them in a residential setting, so took them out of their homes and tried to help turn things around. We realized you got to involve the families. If you don't involve the families, the shifts don't sustain over time. 
The other thing is, is that it was an incredibly vulnerable time for kids when they had to come back into their homes and into their schools. Then we kept following our research and the research of the country and realized that if we moved our interventions to a younger age, then we would have a different impact trajectory-wise. The kids in our residential camp I'll tell you what, file after file after file, guess when the problem started? Preschool. It's becoming more and more widely known across the country, particularly with poor kids and stressed kids, that you gotta start before kindergarten. You know, with the momentous Institute, we start with three-year-olds. And if we do it, and we can, we're learning more and more, and Momentous Institute is a big part of the research there. I like the glitter ball because it's like your brain, and the glitter's the thoughts, and you shake it, and it's all, like your thoughts are all over the place. But then it starts settling down, starting to get calmer and calmer and sometimes I really need to be calm. My wishing for you, Rams, is be a good man and apply values, inclusion, respect, and honesty. Yes, that is an I want. That is my vision for Ramses Rajola. Emma, my vision for you is to overall attain happiness and be comfortable with who you are. I know you grew up to be a strong, confident, bright young woman. And as much as I wish you could stay small forever, I very much look forward to the things and achievements you accomplish. Trent, it's so important for you to be honest, fair, and God-fearing. I pray for you every day. You will do the same for your family. It's in our marrow here to focus as much on children's emotional well-being as their academic well-being. Years ago, somebody put a black circle on a board for me and said, what do you see? And then they asked everybody, and people said, oh, a, a black dot, a circle, a point. Uh, and then they said, nobody is talking about the white space. Everybody's focusing in on that black dot. That's what happens for families when crisis hits, is that we zero in on the black dot and we overdefine everything by what's going wrong. And so good therapy brings into focus the white space. If you do that well, then families find their own way out of what feels pretty hopeless when they first come to us. We don't ignore the problems, but you don't want to stay there because that's not how change happens. Nos conocen, saben, saben quién somos como familia. Es como familia. what you pay attention to expands. So we pay attention to family strengths. We ask our parents to write a vision statement for their child, to think about what they want their child to be like when they grow up. Que nosotros, tu familia, podamos ser el apoyo que necesitas, ser esos cimientos que te sostengan en tu crecimiento espiritual, físico y académico. I want to see you graduate 
from the university and working with passion and dedication in what you want to be. I'm sure when you're older, you realize the sacrifices your dad and I made so that we could finish school. To me, continuing my education has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Que aproveches lo maravilloso que es la educación. Que el aprendizaje te ayude a ponerte al servicio de los demás. It's very important for you to understand black history and culture. You must understand how far we have come, how much that has been sacrificed for you to have the opportunities that don't seem like much. Que nunca olvides tus raíces, tu origen, tu esencia. All the teachers, you know, they were all just very wanting to get to know us. It was not only about, you know, making a bond with us, but also with our parents, like, I really liked that. There was a time when maybe the entire community, and including us, um, thought more in line with uh, at-risk, troubled, um, hope we can help, hope you make it. And, and we've really moved into a space where it's much more about, no, no, we expect you to make it. We expect momentous outcomes. We include the whole family. So now you have kids and parents experiencing this challenge, this interaction that really has a unique way of pulling them together. I always believe that the families possess these strengths already, and it's just them needing to find a way to rediscover those strengths. And once they do, wonderful things happen. We started working together and then uh, interacting more. Felt myself getting closer to my family. I actually had someone to encourage me now. Cuando lo encuentro, me siento um, calma, en paz, tranquila, que sé que, que voy a salir adelante. Sé que este, podemos encontrar una salida juntos. Ellos nos ayudaron, principalmente a nosotros primero, a entendernos nosotros para poder ayudar a nuestros hijos. Ya que yo estaba calmada y que había mmm, modo de hablar en paz sin exaltarme, pude comunicarme con mi hijo de una manera que yo misma me sorprendí. I felt not alone anymore. I was now that kid who I saw that really interacted with their family. My mom said I wouldn't talk at all. She would tell me to talk. Llegó un momento que tuve que decir, para. No hables tanto. Uh, si tu maestro te, te pide que hables, habla. Si no, guarda silencio. Y me dice él, um, pues no querías que hablara. Y ya estoy hablando. Le digo, pues sí, pero cuando tengas el derecho de hablar <ríe> y en la clase, pues más amigable. Sí cambió su, su actitud, su... su <laughs> like self-esteem is kind of a tricky concept because it got a lot of play for a while. Sometimes it's about reframing for people that children feel good about themselves, not, not 
because of esteem. It's because of accomplishment, and it's because of connection. And so if we can create a space for kids to accomplish and achieve and feel deeply connected with their family and their community, then the esteem comes. So it sort of flips it on its head. Those are our future leaders. Our future leaders are going to be the kids who had some tough stuff. It isn't the kid who has the softest, sweetest path and then at age 25 falls off the map because they've never had to discover who's inside them. Many men just like you found strength knowledge and courage and changed a nation. I see you as a fun, super involved dad, a loving man that puts his family first. Respect people, no matter all the races and people, respect him too. exercises and have good habits. No matter where you are in life, even if you hit rock bottom, Dad and I will always be there for you and love you endlessly. Never be afraid to talk to us. And uh, so I'm a subversive person. I try and do what works. If I can get leverage on something in some way, I'll go do that. You know, things work better for less, that's good. Things work less well for more, that's bad. When I was camp board chairman, it was the first time we really put in tracking kids long term. We said we had, you know, 85% success rate or something, but we didn't really know. It's really actually wonderful what they do. You know, you're in school there for, you know, an amount of time and then you're out, you know, in middle school and high school and then you hear about them again once you're going to a really big milestone in your life. Our kids are with us three years old through fifth grade. And then we have a researcher who follows them after they leave us. They're in 65 different schools, some great, some medium, some horrible. We take kids who have the risk factor of poverty and we prove up that if you get this kind of strong start, that will buffer you from some of what statistically may have been coming down your path. Seven years after our kids step off our campus, 99% are graduating on time. 86% are going on to higher education and 88% of our college freshmen are re-enrolling for their sophomore year. And that's seven years after they left us, so we know that something extraordinary is happening both on the prevention side with the school and the intervention side with the therapy services that's buffering kids and prepping them to succeed long-term. It is sort of mind-blowing to me that we can take kids from three-year-olds to fifth graders, and if you can get them well launched from there, they'll do fine. We know that we have to continue to do extraordinary work with the kids in our classroom and the kids and families in our therapy offices, but we want that work to feed our research and our training, and our research and training to feed that work in a way that allows us to develop and test and export ideas that can be applied in any other setting across the country. 
I've heard the old story about the starfish washing up on the beach. Some guys down there pitching them back in, and somebody says, yeah, what are you doing? That thousands of them, you're not going to change this. And he said, well, help that one. I actually don't like that story. What I want to work on is how do you get them to quit washing up? So how do we get upstream and not have starfish on the beach? I want to change society. My mission is to change the world. When I knew when I wanted to be a math teacher was, uh, was my senior year. When I was in high school, there was a lot of people saying that they didn't want to go to college. They just, after high school, they want to work. I want to be there to guide them or to help them realize that it's important. The reason why I really want to go into teaching, um, it's just from my experiences with my own teachers. You know, this teacher really thinks highly of me and really thinks I can, you know, actually do this work when you yourself don't even think that you can. Above all else, never feel ashamed for what you believe in. Don't let anyone ever tear you down and be confident to stand up for yourself, for mom and dad. That is my vision for you, Ramses. I love Ramses with all my heart to live a long, happy life. Mommy loves you.